Hello, people. Thank you guys for tuning in to Heavenly Scent Speaks. As you guys know, I always bring on guests that are doing some amazing thing in our communities, guests that I think youth should know, so on and so forth. And so you guys know who I am, and so I won't prolong. I'm Cynthia, the organizer of Heavenly Scent Youth, where I provide a fun experience for youth and we do just about anything you can think of, more so things that they aren't used to seeing, for instance, in our neighborhoods, is basketball and or football. So I try to change the narrative. So we do stuff like bowling, skating, tennis, golf, archery, camping, horseback riding, um, things like that, you know, just to show the kids something different. Because I got this thing to where it's, I believe that it's hard to dream what you can't see. So if we're in this box, how could kids think about or even be subject to anything different from what they see and so that's what I do and so I met these two wonderful people and the cool part about it is they're right in our neighborhood they're doing some amazing things they look just like you and I and so I had to bring them on I was able to bring some of the kids over to what they about to tell you guys that they're doing and so the, for the kids to see something as such in our neighborhood was mind-blowing so I want you guys to know about what they got going on so to my left, to my right, is Miss Annette. We'll let her start and tell you who she is and what she's doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, my name's Annette Shelton. I'm a real estate broker with Colwell Banker, and I'm the listing agent for Harrison Row. Harrison Row is a community in the East Garfield Park neighborhood. Uh, brand new 40 units, uh, new homes, uh, brand new development in East Garfield Park. And I'm just going to introduce myself. Can I turn it over to sure. Quentin Addison? Hello, everybody. I'm Quentin Addison, uh, Fangs Development, uh, joint venture partner with Structure Development. And uh, we bring in a new community in uh, the 27th Ward. So what's different and, and what... I want to highlight about Mr. Quentin is the fact that he's born and raised right here in the North Lundell community. So, Quentin, can you tell us a little bit about um, your upbringing, your, your reasoning behind what you're doing now? Well, uh, you know, at an early age, I, I sent our community. It was thriving. And, um, you know, as years came along, uh, businesses started leaving out the community and homes as well. So... Me and my partners, we decided we was going to, you know, make a change. And uh, we partnered up with another group, and here we go today. We build a marginal homes so, on the west side of Chicago. Who are your partners? Oh, uh, well, I have two business partners, Kevin Brinson and Andreas Prairie. And um, and know, are they also um, recipients of North Lundell? Yes. And so what, what was the vision originally before you guys even thought about before you before you guys even thought about um, bringing something different to the community, well, we was we was rehabbing properties and um, we just got tired of going back and forth with the city and trying to you know bring houses that wasn't affordable and rehabbing buildings trying to sell them at four hundred and five hundred thousand it just wasn't working so we partnered up with someone can do. A little bit better. Well, one of your business partners is on the other side of the room. I know you camera shy, so if you want to swap out and let him come in. Oh, I would love there to. There you go. There you go. He, he got some pause. Oh, okay. He popped cool. he pause this. Oh, <laughs> am I I'm okay with no, hands on the yeah. table or not? How do you see fit? Oh, good. I just I'm... show my, my logo. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> do I get to act like Fred G. Sanford when he gets in live. TV land? You fit to be like... Live. Thank you guys. We just took a moment of a break just to swap out because uh, Mr. Q, he's shy, so we got somebody that's not so shy. So we're going to let him introduce. Uh, real quick, We just I was just talking to uh, Quentin about his upbringing uh, in North Lundale and what was his reasoning behind what you guys are doing. Well, you know, one of the things that we must remember is that we always wanted to be stakeholders in our community, so... That made it possible for us to, you know, not only think about being developers 
and everything, but even asking the questions that no one else would ask when it came down to doing big projects and stuff, you know. And uh, I, I, I first and foremost want to give a big thanks to uh, Structured Development, Sam and Mike Drew, Walter Burnett, Terry Young, a lot of those people were key and instrumental in putting this together for us in order to do that. And then the thing about these big developers, they don't think that it's a big I little you type of scenario. They were actually open to hearing ideas that we had. And so we brought over the idea of modular homes to them. At first, they kind of like bucked at it a little bit because they were unfamiliar with it. And then after going to a designer's uh, or builder's conference, they they sought out uh, someone there from Connects, and Connects allowed us to come over and see their facility and see what they could do. We already have a couple of other modular companies in mind, but when we seen what they could do, we were like, this is perfect for what we want to do. And we just started growing from there. And then we started adding even more ideas as they started the building process. We're tweaking some of the ideas, even some of the designs. So, Annette, <clears throat> excuse me. So, Annette, I'm just curious. So, what's it like you when you have people to come in? What What's the first initial reaction? Because when I walked in, I was like, wow. Even my son was like, wow, man, this is really nice. So, what, are you, what, are you, what kind of feedback are you getting when you are escorting people <clears throat> into the different units? Well, I just want to make sure that I let people know that um, this is not true of East Garfield Park and of Harrison Row. A lot of times they think when uh, the city is building something that it's not going to be uh, quality. I have to tell you, it's affordable homes with luxury finishes. And so when you walk through our homes, you want to purchase them. They have, I mean, the flooring, we have wrought iron, the finishes are really supreme and they don't look affordable. And what's so, the address? The address is 2854 West Harrison. And you can go to harrisonrow.com, take a look at all of the finishes, the photos, drive by the neighborhood. We have 10 units that are already completed. Wow and have certifications of occupancy from the city and are ready to go. Excuse cool. me, nine units, we did sell one. <laughs> and we have others under application and waiting to get them closed. So you guys, this is a booming neighborhood. East Garfield Park is hot, hot, hot. I heard Alderman Burnett I thank him very much for allowing us this opportunity. He said that these lots have been vacant since what? For over 50 years. Wow. 50 years. I'm sorry. Let me close my mouth. Right. 50, <laughs> 50 years. And now thank you uh, to the building department and the mayor's, the Lori Lightfoot, for just expanding this neighborhood. This is something that is very much needed. And if you take a look at some of the other new developments that's coming up in the neighborhood, then now you know why we are pushing for you to hurry up and get into these homes because they are absolutely amazing. So that's the consensus of everybody that's coming through. Okay. So what's, an exa what's the exaggerated uh, number of units to complete? Exaggerated, so we have 10. Okay. Um, well, the entire community is 40. And wow. so, nice. yeah. And so we have eight of those were in the first phase, which uh, was on Congress. Those were the brick and mortars. And like Kevin said, that we actually... Uh, decided that, you know, we wanted something with a bigger footprint that would be mm -hmm. a little bit more profitable. And so we went into phase two. Phase two are 28 units. Nice. So total, um, it's going to be 40. And I would say that we have um, uh, about 20 more units to go to finish up. And we're hoping that we should have all of these ready to go before Christmas. Yes. yes. Awesome. Now, Kevin, tell us what exactly is a developer for those that are Cause see, I know it's a developer and it's an architect. So can you tell us the difference for those who out there trying to figure out what exactly do you mean? Are well, you the person that go in and design the house or what? No, no. The, the the developer is the person with the overall scope of the entire project that's that's actually implemented. He's the stakeholder. 
Okay. The the architect is somebody totally different. He's the engineer that conceptualizes that process when you're doing it. They're the ones who take the building, do all the drawings, create all the mechanical specifications that have to go downtown to the building department for approval and everything so that they can get permission to build the actual project. And so what's the name of your um, development company again? Fane's Development, LLC. And so can you tell us a little bit about your background as far as uh, coming up in North Lawndale? Well, I'm a lifelong resident of North Lawndale. I grew up in the same neighborhood, also been there since 1968. Uh, my background is, he said is vast. I, 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 yes, it's 68. I'm, 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 a, I'm officially, I'm officially uh, a member of AARP now. There's nothing wrong with but, that. But look, look, I want to get there. Uh, my my background is actually in in a number of areas. I'm I'm actually the CEO of a major record label that has a joint venture with Atlantic Records. Oh, wow. I'm also uh, an IT professional. I have two degrees from DeVry University for Network Systems Administration and Network Communications Management. Uh, I engineer. I I do pretty much a jack of all things and. Even on the developmental side, I started doing architect drawings. Oh, wow. I just spoke it into existence and started doing them. You know, and a lot of people ask me, you sure you know what you're doing? I'm like, yeah, I know what I'm doing because I've been able to go downtown and get the permits stamped on building projects that I've done and completed already. So, you know, it's nothing that we can't do. We can do anything we want to. All we have to do is speak it into existence, it. bring those ideas to the table, bring the necessary parties together. Because you can't do anything without synergy. You need everybody, all players at the table in order to bring this together. Amen. So for develop, for develop, to be a developer, is there any special training or, or classes that you have to take? I mean, you can take classes for different certifications. I would suggest that. I learned from the ground up. I have wow. a brother who does construction, so there was a lot of things that he told me and I saw him do. So the hands-on is, is, is the best approach. And I hate that they got rid of all the vocational training in all the schools Trades. because that's where we learn those trades Absolutely. said in the public yes. school yes. systems yes. where they started teaching us to be carpenters, brick masons, electricians, plumbers, HVAC, and everything, and now we don't even have that anymore, and, and we need to get back to that. So true. So, Annette, I was watching a reel or video where you guys had the guy from the bears to come over. So you guys had, what was that, an open house? Tell us about that, please. Okay, so let's see, where do we start? <laughs> um, first of all, the um, uh, developers that Fames has a joint venture with is Structured Development. And uh, the construction company is Connect Construction. They're the modular home uh, construction company. And so um, Josh Braun, uh, the founder of Connects Construction has teamed up with um, Eddie Jackson, um, Mark Barron, Eddie Jackson of the Chicago Bears. Let me make sure I say that. Number four. <laughs> Go Bears. Right. Uh, um, Mark Barron, Hall of Famer. I believe it's uh, the LA Rams and uh, quite a few other so NFL cool. players who have invested in Connect Construction and Harrison Rowe. So the reel that you saw actually was um, our presentation and bringing those guys on. They toured the, the construction plan of Connects. That was cool. And then also, um, I want to say Bo Jackson. That's his <laughs> nickname. So Eddie Jackson actually has a nonprofit organization. His heart is into giving back to the uh, community and the youth. So we had a, financial liter a youth financial literacy uh, workshop that went on for two days with St. Vincent's Marillac House. And we had about 30 children that were there. Wow. We teamed up with um, Wintrust Bank. Um, BMO Harris Bank, Prudential, um, which uh, is about retirement, uh, 401ks, things like that. And so those guys came in and we spoke to the youth about uh, the home buying process. So one thing you have to know is that it, we have to break that generational curse um, and we have to educate about financial literacy. Absolutely. 
and um, generational wealth. And so that is what Eddie Jackson and a lot of these prof professional players are doing with their nonprofit organizations. And I'm really um, excited to be a part of it. And so we are actually teaming up with them and we are reaching out even to your youth organizations and other youth organizations to teach our young people about financial literacy. So once the children came out and saw the homes, they actually went back to their parents and now guess what? We're going to be doing a financial literacy um, workshop for the parents so that now we can get them into uh, affordable homeowners home and become homeowners as well. And that is so awesome because in our neighborhoods, in our communities, uh, financial literacy, it's not even thought of. And so therefore, when people see houses as you guys got, it's like, oh, you have to be a millionaire. Who can, you know, how do I go about doing this? Or how do I go about doing that? So let me ask you, do you guys have things in place to whereas if someone wants to inquire, are there like classes or um, uh, like a home buyer's workshop? You did mention financial mm -hmm. literacy. Are, do you, is that provided or can you guys navigate or provide those resources for someone that's interested? Absolutely. So I just want to just um, break that myth of, you know, the fear that we have a lot of times of the unknown of, you know, I can't afford that. That's out of, you know, my capabilities. But if you work a job and you are paying rent, then why are you building someone else's dream? Build your own dream. And home ownership is definitely a dream that can come tr true. And we are, we have structured home buyer seminars where we teach you exactly what to do from, um, you know, I'm just going to say it, bad credit, no credit, and we get you in place with counselors that can help you to build your credit, um, show you how to save that down payment. You know, we're not in the days where you don't have down payment. To be honest, I hope those days don't come back because I feel like it's an obligation that you have to put some kind of skin in the game. So we are definitely teaching um, about home ownership and doing buyer seminars. Just go to harrisonroad.com and the information is there. Fill, the, fill out the information. It will let you know if you're qualified for these homes. And if you're not, we're going to reach out to you and see what we could do to help you to become qualified. I love it. Yes. Kevin, earlier you mentioned that you um, had that you had some type of um, partnership with, I think you said Atlantic Records, correct? Yes. Well, we're the label that's responsible for putting out Twister's Adrenaline Rush, Do or Die's Pole Pimp, Twister and Speed Not Monsters, Mob Stability. Really? And we basically were producing over three quarters of the Chicago artists at the time that we secured our deal and everything. So, you know, I had to learn that business from the ground up as well. So all these businesses you have to wow. learn from the ground up because if you don't, you will not get paid in the end. And I did my due diligence because I'm still getting paid. So I know over there at you guys' commercial space, you guys have a studio that you're building on the second floor to where you're going to allow, um, I guess, anyone that's interested in uh, recording or whatever it is they do music-wise to come in and, and take part in that. Whatever. Yes. We'll be, we'll be uh, renting out for commercial uh, rental but we're also doing a program with Chance Light also. So Chance Light has a, a program, if I'm correct, I think it's... Uh, I, I, know, I think you said, did you say job placement and uh, things of that sort downstairs? On the yeah, floor? yeah, we're going to do a workforce development downstairs also. Uh, we'll be having community meetings there also. And we may even uh, throw our hands into the violence prevention uh, you know, where we got people and, and out, out in the field trying to uh, create uh, violence alternatives and everything or trying to stop the cycle of violence within the community. So kind of like a one-stop shop. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, you have to be able to... I, I, I tend to be a believer that the main proponents of violence are lack of access to opportunities and miseducation. So... If you don't give people opportunities, how are you going to stop violence? You know, you got to give them something else. 
you telling them to put down the gun, but you ain't giving them nothing else to grab a hold of. Put down the gun, give them a hammer. Put down the gun, give them a job. Put down the gun, give them an opportunity. Give them a creative opportunity, whatever opportunity it mm -hmm. is, as long as it can help them and curb the cycle of violence. That's exactly yes. why I try to provide a safe haven for, for the youth, because like you just said, I mean, what, what else is there for them to do if we're not showing them the way? And I thank God for you guys for the connection because um, kids just don't get to see people like us come from where we are, come from where we are, I'm sorry, come from our communities that are doing great things in the community. And so, like I said, just, you know, be, prior to me talking to the kids about the development and then showing them the pictures, they're like, what is that, downtown Miss Cynthia? I'm like, no, it ain't downtown. I'm like, it's literally around the corner. And so we pull up, they're like, wow, this nice. And then they went inside and it was, you know, it was like, and so I was a part of a program called Junior Senior Scholars. And what that was, was when I was early, in, when I was in fifth grade, I was, my mom put me in a program to where I was already learning about college readiness. And uh, for because of that program, it, it molded me into the person, the giver that I am now in regards to wanting to provide all these different resources. Because I'm from the west side of Chicago, and there was a bus coming to pick us up and taking us to North Central College, which is in Naperville. Um, and we were on campus. Uh, we, we ate in the, the, the cafeteria. And the college students were um, our teachers, like early development, you know, the PE was our gym teacher. And so just seeing that, and then, you know, it, it was like, you know, I knew then that I was different. And so for that, that's why I do the same with kids. I'm like, no, let's go over here. And you know, the more you expose them, the more it opens their, their brain. And now it's like, you know, I tell them all the time, don't just limit yourself to one thing, because guess what? All the kids can't be Michael Jordan. They can't be, what, Bo Jackson. And so if you don't have other options, any event that you get hurt, then what's your plan B? And so when I talk to kids, I'm like, okay, what's your plan B if that don't work? And I'm like, uh, uh, next time I see you, let me know your plan B. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it, I mean, I, I too was a, a byproduct of one of those alternative programs, the TRIO programs. Uh, I was an alumni of Project Fame Up With Bound at Chicago State University where we basically went to school on Saturdays. They gave us a stipend. We got to stay on the college campuses in the summertime and go to classes and even live in the dorms and everything. Yep. And, it, it, you know, at the time I was 16 years old, I was thinking I'm not even college material. <laughs> right. I, my mind wasn't on nothing Absolutely. like that. I was... My mind was thinking about girls, and but that that positioned me to start saying oh, I can do anything I want exactly. to do from that yes. point on. Yes. yes, the seeds was planted. And I just want to kind of chime in on what you were saying um, through that workshop. What we did was um, all of the the um, kids there had to actually um, control a monthly budget and save money, mock money, of course we had Monopoly money, uh, and save enough money for a down payment with a home. Like and the team that won, oh my gosh, they ended up with the signed autograph pictures. I think they got signed uh, jerseys from Bo Jackson. They got cliques. Um, and they got money, actually. we They gave them cash money, uh, not the players, uh, the organization gave them uh, cash money as well. So they were rewarded for... Uh, setting up a budget I like uh, because I heard one of the uh, NFL players said, you know what? I didn't even have a checking account until wow. I got in the NFL. So we have to start that right now. And um, you guys are so, uh, you know, fortunate that you had programs like that. Absolutely. And a lot of these students do not and schools do not have sure. that. And I'm going to tell you, they're not going to teach this in school. So right. this is something that's it's up to us. That's true. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things that Eddie Jackson said is that, uh, you know, uh, upon the player getting into the league after his first three or four years, if he's out of the league three years after that, he's probably bankrupt. Okay. So you have to be very mindful about that money and having that financial literacy in order to move forward. Absolutely. That's That's a vital function. And then the kids also, you know, I reiterate to them all the time, there's other ways that you can, you know, make an honest living. You don't have to be a rapper. You don't have to be an athlete. That There's jobs out there that will put you in a position to where you, you, you can really be great and be comfortable. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that, that's what we have to do. You know, it takes a village to put it all together. And so I appreciate, you know, the things that you guys are doing in, right in the North Londale neighborhood because... Yeah, it's 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 awesome.
It's something special it's awesome about this it. area that we're in right now. You know, a lot of people don't know that this area right here is the first area that blacks migrated to when they made the great migration from the south into Chicago. It wasn't Bronzeville or any other place. It was right here, concentrated right in this area, all the way back to Jewtown. That was that was the area that was considered our, our neighborhood when we first came here. So we need to pay attention to that, and, and, you know. And, you know, I know it's probably a reason why it's not being developed now, you know, but I, I'm quite sure something's coming soon. <laughs> So what was the, um, what was, if you guys could give advice to anybody that, that's, you know, trying to get up off the ground or need some encouragement, what would you, what, what would you say? I'm going to say, um, of course, go to HarrisonRow.com and then we have open houses on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 2. Come by and just take a look. And, you know, he says, you know, you have to. Write the plan. You have to have a dream. You have to step into that dream. Walk into that house, claim it, and if you're a believer, ask for it. I love it. Kevin? Definitely. Uh, limit, we don't have limitations. Take every opportunity that's available. You know, you want to be a homeowner? Here's a perfect opportunity. You know, we got something that's very affordable as opposed to down the street where they want 750000 <laughs> You know, we got something that's way, way So with that being before. said, I thank Can TV for giving me this platform. I thank my mom and my grandmother for supporting me. I thank all the people that helped me pour into these kids. Um, you guys are awesome. I thank God, of course, for being the head of my life. And as they both said in a nutshell, if you want it, you got to dream it. Don't be afraid. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for yes. coming in. And y'all stay tuned next week to Heavenly Sent People You Should Know.